is the cartoon that we have last night. And what we have is a cartoon of Charlie Chaplin eating the boot from hunger. So this is an old movie where he's desperately starving. And finally, he just kind of gives in and starts eating the boot. And we have three different reactions. We've had people laughing, the people kind of smiling, and the people who are pretty sad. So what I want you to talk about with your group is why are they having these different reactions? And how does this connect to the spoon theory? And how does this connect to gaslighting and oppression? So talk about that for a little bit, and we'll check it in a couple minutes. All right. What are you getting from the cartoon? It feels like they've got a good one.
and to support and uplift the people who are actually making me feel terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I really related to gaslighting in the way that it showed up in my codependent upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking in our group about how gaslighting is a really clear example of interpersonal oppression mm -hmm. and how to um, kind of put the messages that the great big oppressive subject puts on to the oppressed people but it's interpersonally mm -hmm. and then it has consequences because it's reflective of the whole oppressive system. You talk about shifting blame, which is really important. So gaslighting has a lot to do with saying, this is on you, not on me. You're the one who's doing this. You're the one who's making me react this way. You're the one who's bringing this out on me. This isn't a me thing. This is a you thing. Go ahead. Um, in that video, the first video we saw, the switch video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the oppressed majority. In the end of the video, um, you notice that uh, woman says, as the, the man says, oh, look at me, like, oh, um, I, I, this happened to me and everything, my uh, brother's fought for this and everything, and then the woman says, oh, you just, like, oh, yeah, just, just point the blame on him and said, look at the way you're dressed. Yes. Look at the way you look. Mm -hmm. You're dressed like this, and that's what happened. Excellent. That's why it happened. You shift the blame onto the victim, and this is all your fault, because of what you did or what you said. So, gaslighting is a really important ingredient for oppression and work. You have to keep people kind of confused. So the term gaslighting comes from this old movie, 1940s, and it's talking about something in like the 1890s. Go right ahead. I was talking about it. Um, it's talking about this old movie where um, there was somebody who married a woman to try to get at her money, and so he was trying to make her feel crazy so that she would end up in an institution and that he could keep her money. So pretty much he had a campaign to make her feel like she was crazy. So he would hide things from her and say, like, where is the thing? And she's like, I, I had it right there. I was like, mm -hmm. you're losing stuff again. And he'd end up messing with the lights. And she'd say, like, that's so weird that the lights are dim because they were gas lights. Uh, and he'd say, the lights are perfectly fine. What are you talking about? So the idea was to kind of get her to doubt herself so that she wasn't even sure what was right and what was wrong anymore. Like, am I actually, am I seeing this or am I overreacting? actually understanding this correctly? I was like, no, maybe I'm making stuff up. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just going to say it becomes, um, over time, less about them. Well, uh, you know, after they have oppressed you in that way, it becomes, you start to silence yourself before mm -hmm. they even have to. Yes. Because of the self-doubt. Yes. It's their a really important reaction. Mm -hmm. It's a really important part of oppression is if you can get the subordinate group to actually just shut themselves up, mm -hmm. it'll go much, much easier. Yeah. So they stop pushing back so so gaslighting and misperception and telling people that they're overreacting is an absolutely crucial, important part of oppression. Um, I think that gaslighting easily transitions into horizontal hostility mm -hmm. because what's once, horizontal hostility? So let's say um, I now believe that I'm crazy because someone has been gaslighting me, mm -hmm. and now I walk around believing that I'm crazy and I see behavior that reflects my own from someone who reminds me of myself, and now I tell them they're crazy. I believe that they're crazy, and now I keep them down because I've internalized my oppression. So horizontal hostility is when members of, of an oppressed group oppress members of their own group. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we, I might be the one who's saying, what were you wearing, right? She's a slut, she was wearing a mini skirt. Right? She deserves what she gets. Even though I don't benefit from sexism and I didn't create the system of sexism, I can make sure that I'm part of the people who enforces it. I end up leading the crime and then I end up repeating it as well. So I'm not benefiting from sexism, but I am participating in keeping it going. So the antidote to gaslighting. Gaslighting is when somebody tells you that what you're perceiving is wrong and that you are uh, putting yourself into doubt, you're kind of giving contradictory information. So the antidote to gaslighting is validation. When somebody says, Oh my God, I have that experience too. Like, no, I totally have that. It's like, of course you're reacting that way because that's a normal, typical, good reaction to have. Anybody would react like that. And sometimes when you get validated, you have that feeling like, right, right, like you saw that. I'm not making that up. You saw that too. So sometimes some of my students have said that reading that article of that you're not crazy is really validating. It's like, oh, that's what that was. Right? I wasn't making that up. I wasn't imagining things. It was a thing. Somebody was manipulating me. Validation can feel that way. That's why consciousness raising groups are really powerful, where we get um, subordinate or oppressed peoples together. And we say, hey, I just had that same experience you had. You had that too. 
let's work this together. So validation is a crucial antidote to oppression. Right. Um, we see like in like movies mm -hmm. where like it's like the abusive man mm -hmm. and like he tells the like his wife or his woman mm -hmm. he's, with, he's like, oh you're not like, you're silly, don't do that. You can't do that. Like, you're, you don't have potential. And then later on that that lady finds potential somehow some way mm -hmm. through like peers or something. Mm -hmm. And then she finds that potential and she's and the second thing is like he was holding her back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot in like movies and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a lot. Excellent. And we see this with all the oppression. So we see it with yeah. men and women. We see it white people and brown people. We see it straight people and queer people. This happens all the time where you're, you're told that you are wrong, that your reactions are wrong, that your identity is wrong, that you're misperceiving, that you're overreacting. It's a really important part of keeping oppression gone. When we can talk to each other and say, no, I feel that same thing that you do. We can kind of recognize, oh, this isn't a me thing. This is a structure thing. And then we get to push back on it again.